large area two-dimensional heterostructures for photodetectors, a collaboration between INL and University of Minho. This project aims at building a large area photodetector with a two-dimensional materials heterostructure and achieve a better theoretical understanding of its working principles. Two-dimensional materials are very interesting materials, are very important nowadays. You can have devices using these materials so thin that they are only a few atoms thick and uh, they can be useful in many applications, namely in uh, flexible electronics for instance and, and things like that. We will show you how we are building these photodetectors, how we build these materials, how we can do these things. For industrial production, these detectors have to have a large area. Chemical vapor deposition is the technique of choice. The device is represented here uh, on the screen. Uh, it's composed of different uh, types of 2D materials. In this case, there are two different, three different types of 2D materials. Uh, you have hexagonal boron nitride on the bottom. Then you have graphene here, represented by the blue uh, spheres. Uh, in between the transition metal decalcogenite is this fairly complicated structure. And on top of it, you have another graphene sheet. And then you have metallic nanoparticles. The device works in a very uh, simple way. Uh, you shine light, the metallic nanoparticles concentrate light on the transition metal decalcogenide, and when, you de when this light is concentrated there, it produces two charges. One charge goes into the top of the graphene sheet, and the other charge goes to the bottom of the graphene sheet. So the graphene acts here as contacts to extract the charges from the transition metal decalcogenide. So you know that light has arrived to the device when you see charges moving on the two uh, graphene sheets. And this is something that you can detect because it's like an electric current. The role of theory in this project uh, is the following. Uh, the, the project is about photodetectors made with two-dimensional materials. And in a photodetector, uh, two things happen, okay? Uh, first is that light is absorbed by the material. And the second is that uh, when this light is absorbed, uh, electrons move inside the material and uh, give rise to current and voltage and that's what makes the detection happen. Uh, at the theory level what we are doing is modeling these two processes. We are modeling the light absorption, non-trivial problem for theory because there are electron and electron interactions that, uh, that determine this optical absorption and we also model how the electrons move inside these structures made with these 2D materials. This project has both a theoretical part for better understanding of how the photodetector works, and an experimental part, leading to the production of a prototype of large area photodetector. In the end, our goal is to fabricate uh, all 2D materials uh, a photodetector. And uh, for that, uh, we need uh, graphene in the first place for the contacts to the active layer which is a transition metal dyed chalcogenide. The graphene uh, we can grow by chemical vapor deposition over large areas with a very high crystalline size up to several millimeters in diameter. And this graphene has the perfect properties uh, to work as a nomic contact to the active layer made by a two-dimensional uh, semiconductor. Graphene is grown in a chemical vapor deposition system, not very different from this one, where we use a copper foil as a catalyst for growth. And uh, then it is transferred using a temporary uh, polymeric substrate onto the final wafer where we fabricate then the devices. Understand how the device works theoretically will help us to improve the quality of device, find even more applications like bio and molecular sensing. So here I do to the fumes. We usually do angel selenide or gallium selenide. And uh, this is a machine that's called molecular beam epitaxy. The principle is that we throw beams of uh, elements in the surface of a substrate and these elements we organize in the 2D materials that uh, we want. 
So these materials, they have the, the proper band gap of the wavelength that we want. So this material will absorb the light and convert in, uh, in an electric current or an electric voltage. Molecular beam taxi needs to, to happen in vacuum because the, the beam of elements need to travel some distance to reach the, the surface of the sample. And in this technique, we can control uh, what element we, it will reach the, the surface of the sample by mechanical shutters that we can control uh, mechanically. The project involves several students that will receive an excellent training for their professional life. Here we do CBD technique where we use uh, molybdenum uh, samples to deposit selenium and form the final crystal molybdenum diselenide. Uh, inside this graphite box we put the samples, then by the use of uh, inert flow we deposit the selenium and form the final crystal. Here we insert the temperature that we need, we close the furnace, we wait, then we open to cool it down and it's ready. This is the system for chemical vapor deposition of uh, our graphene uh, uh, samples. It is a, a hot wall furnace, which is in this compartment. Here you can see the load lock where we load the, the sample uh, in order to avoid contamination of the, of the main uh, reactor. And here you have a graphical user interface where we can control and choose all the parameters of the deposition and we can also monitor everything that is going inside the, the reactor. This is the track where we spin the photoresist on top of the wafers and where after exposure uh, we develop the photoresist and uh, we, can, we process here the wafers where uh, we fabricate the um, photodetectors. So this is a direct right laser tool where we transfer the drawings from the masks onto the photoresist before developing. Each layer of the photodetector has a particular layout and the drawings are uh, transferred uh, to the photoresist by using this tool which has a, a laser that uh, works like a pencil and uh, uh, writes according to the drawing in the, um, in the AutoCAD file, transfers this drawing to the, to the photoresist uh, layer uh, which is covering the wafer from the previous uh, step in the machine we have just seen before this one. Well, this is our Raman system. The uh, Confocal Raman system has three different lasers and we choose the laser according with the properties of the material. Um, this is a very important technique because it doesn't need the sample preparation and we can have the fingerprint of each uh, material. Then for production of a photo detector, we need to produce the active uh, material and to do the characterization. We can also take out information if the sample is under stress or if it has some uh, defects in the sample. This is very important because it will be the uh, active material in the photo diet. Also with Raman, we can infer about the sample quality if it is good to go to the next steps or if we can do a different improvement in the growth. The sample can be uh, characterized with sample point by point or making an area as is shown here in the screen. This is mainly what we do here. Here in this lab we do the electric uh, characterization of our devices. So this is one example of a uh, 2D detector. Uh, that we did in a whole wafer. So it's several detectors in, the, in, the, in this wafer. Uh, here we can shine light in different colors. So as an example, here we can shine this green light and uh, then we measure some current there. And then when the, there is no light, this current drops a lot. So it's an example that uh, how sensitive it's our detector to the light 
this we, we can um, look at the weather that we want to and also try to improve our detector. This project opened new interesting possibilities on the research of 2D materials, both theoretical and experimental, on both institutions, INL and University of Mignot.